This is the one and only Jack Watman. We hope you enjoy it. Right. Is this one going over here, Karen? Scott's supposed to be doing, is it? Is he? Yes, it's going. Oh yeah, it's going, yeah. Right, okay, right, okay. Is that all right? Do you want to understand anything? Oh, Lord. Just smile. What we do, we're going to do the interview. I'll concentrate more on Jackie with that one, then, because obviously he was interviewed mainly last time. I know. Oh, dear. And um, what we'll do is obviously I'll answer questions as you go as well. So we'll go for it. Okay. okay. And I'll do the introductions at the start. So we make out of that one, boys and girls, we're doing applause at the start. You know, even though I know they've been here and whatever, we can normally do the interviews. Still curious, but we'll do it. Curious to that, right, right. Okay. No, it's warm out. Everyone ready? Yep. Love, yep. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Jack and Dev Watman. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming to call it to see us today. Thank you. Um, I'll start with you for a moment, Debs. Um, what have you been up to since you saw us last September? Um, no. Well, I did a tour of Funny Money, the Ray Cooney France, whatever, um, and I've just driven from Swansea today. I was doing Abigail's party down there at the Grand Theatre, which, uh, of course, another good companion did, Mary Town. And uh, that was sort of like a slot in, we weren't on tour or anything like that. And I've done lots of who's, of course, mm -hmm. signings and mm -hmm. conventions and cabaret Western Supermare for twice. Who circuit, which went down quite well. Um, I think there was quite a good write-up in the Who magazine, wasn't there? Was Did anyone see that? Yeah. Yes. At, uh, hey, big spender. If I'm hey, right. big spender. Yeah. <laughs> Last time I did cabaret as well, the song cabaret and big spender. Big spender yeah. And um, people gasped because they didn't you got have your much legs on out me. again. Yes, you got I your did. Legs out. <laughs> yes, I did. Yes. I thought, well, I'll do it. You know, let's yeah. have a go. <coughs> And for the future? I'm doing a tour of Out of Order, another Ray Cooney farce. I seem to do Ray Cooney farces now. Um, and that's going on for 14 weeks. I don't know the dates yet, but we start in March of next year. Mm -hmm. And carry through it. There might be a summer season at the end of it as well. Good. And who's starring with you now? That's Trevor Bannister, uh, Henry McGee, Colin Baker. Oh, Colin. Marvellous. And Gordon Kay. So uh, it should be quite fun. Should be good fun. Is yeah. that the first time you've worked with Colin, or have you worked with him before? No, I know it now. I did not with Colin. I did uh, Goldilocks and Three Bears. I played Goldilocks and Goldilocks. <laughs> <laughs> what did Colin play? Bankle, the oh, evil boy. ringmaster. Yeah, that was good casting. It was, wasn't it? Yeah, he was all dressed in black leather, and he had this whip. And he really enjoyed that. <laughs> he used to come up to me in the rings and go, Oh, <laughs> it's here again. Yeah. Sounds like a potential director there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, please. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I see Colin, of course, at the conventions. Yeah, of course. And well, we seem to do the same ones, really. Um, mm. It seems to be a circuit. Yes, yes. The last time I saw it was in Western Super Mario. Yeah. Yes. Say, but, uh, uh, they were filming um, a documentary about uh, Seaside Landlady, I think it was. And it, it was. Which TV was it? Central? Central TV. And the film crew were there. And it was like a fly on the wall documentary. And they really picked me out and followed me over two days, seeing the rehearsal of the number and all that. And you're thinking, oh, I, my number cabaret, I had a totally different version to the one they wanted. So I'm trying to relearn it all the time. You see me going, oh, <laughs> um, But uh, that's coming out uh, next summer. Ooh. That's what on TV that'll be on. That's on TV. On TV. Central. I don't know. What, Central's based in Birmingham. No, mm. Nottingham. Something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's so. Uh, that's that's all right. That was quite fun. But they even you know fill me at breakfast. I said I don't eat breakfast. I said you are today. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's all right. Good. I move on to Jack. Come yes, on. Yes, do. Certainly. Dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dead. Yeah. I can't help that. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Never mind. <laughs> this will be your second or third convention for Doctor Who? I don't know. It's Debbie who gets me inveigled into these, and I've enjoyed them. 
Uh, the one at Cracklin with you did, didn't I? Yes. Oh, Southampton. Southampton. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is his third, yes. Yes, we just third. Yes, I lost my pyjamas at the hotel there. Well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> <Another Southampton>. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to take you back, because I know you was, um, he was actually born in Chingford, wasn't you? Mm -hmm. Which is close to where I come from, North London as well, so I know quite well. Um, and you then attended the... Uh, was the drama school you went to? Italia Conti. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, and uh, Italia Conti Stage School, funny place. Mm. And I wanted to be a dramatic actor. And they did a review, would you believe, called Continuity. <laughs> Tongue in cheek. And if you ask me, or don't ask me, oh, I will no. sing you the opening chorus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and please. It was the Palace Theatre Westcliff, and we had to sing. Carry on, Conti's the youth of the stage, stars in the making, let us be the rage. Act or sing, a fun makers do, keep us happy, make it snappy, do, do, do. Carry on, sailor, it's safe to bring, soldier and airman, your darling docking. Ta, 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 ta. <laughs> Carry on, Conti's, we're here. <laughs> okay. well, and <laughs> and I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to the finale, which is... <laughs> And before we go away, if we would like to say that in variety, you must have variety. Hearts a beat, here we stand complete. We set our feet to a gay tempo. Come on, on something rather. Let's hear us. Now let's cheer us. Now let's say goodbye. Oh, well. <laughs> and that was eight shillings a week and all found. <laughs> yes. now, now we know what Deb's got to singing technique. <laughs> I can never sing. But in those days at Conti's, there, there used to be a very famous Christmas play called Where the Rainbow Ends, which was at the Hoban Empire. Oh, this was your first... Uh, and I started it as a frog and worked my way up. <laughs> <laughs> and then that, she that plays St. George. Out, is that the push you out grew the, uh, the I don't know. <laughs> I truly don't know. That was, just, that was the time of the first moving crisis. Anyway, we moved from the Hoban Empire, but we had to move from the M Hoban Empire because a bomb fell on it in the... In the Blitz, and we went down to the new theatre. And it was a very good recommendation for the eye. You know, new theatres, you have to have an iron curtain. Mm -hmm. Well, I, the Hoban Empire, most theatres, they're very good, these iron curtains, because the bomb fell on the theatre of the Hoban Empire. The, audit, the iron was down, the auditorium was destroyed, but backstage wasn't touched. And I had the same experience at the Apollo, and I was doing, what was I doing, Rebecca. Same thing happened, and it was the other way around. The bomb fell on the stage, destroyed the stage, the auditorium was all right. So, a bit of useless information, the old iron curtains were very effective. That's what it's called, the iron curtain. That was the iron curtain, <laughs> yeah. behind the iron behind curtain. The iron curtain. Yeah. Yeah. Get the right yeah. side of it, then. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 finished with your heart, come down the gully. Yeah. So what did you do when you moved on from doing When the Main Bowies? Golly, I don't know. Was, <laughs> well, the first picture I worked on was, um, what was it, Young Mr Pitt. With uh, Robert Donat, I think it was, and all sorts of people. And I had a nice little part in there, and I was off the film contract, which for some bad, daft reason I didn't sign. Uh, I worked on various pictures, and then, then of course the war came. Mm. Mm. But I do remember the beginnings of television, and um, these days, difficult to believe, and I remember it very well. If it was an act, you know, where it was the last or were the last of the casual labourers and doing quite well, but if you were out of work, somebody would say, how about doing a television? Well, you'd do it, but you wouldn't let anybody know mm. you'd do it, because it wasn't quite the thing. This won't catch on. Very taboo, I should Well, it wasn't taboo, but, you know, you'd sort of got to go down to Alexandra Palace, and it was all the shambles down there. I mean, it was extraordinary. That was live, wasn't it? Live. It was all live, yeah. Yeah. Live. But I remember doing one play called Thunderstruck or something, with an amazing cast. It was about people being cut off in the house. And what you did in those days, you had a camera rehearsal, and you finish about four in the afternoon. Then they had three hours while they called it getting racks sorted out. Now, what racks meant, I've no idea. But anyway, they used to say, now you go away and rest. What it meant was you went away and had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> there was a very pretty girl in this play and we were living in Epping. I'd just got married, or been married a year or two. And I said to this pretty girl, we'll go home, come with me and we'll have some tea. 
And I wasn't very popular with that. I turned <laughs> up with this very pretty girl, and she had one screaming baby under one arm, and, her, and the girl was Audrey Hepburn. Really? And I said, it was, that was a bit later, 1950, I think it was. And uh, she had an appointment to meet somebody in London at Claridge's. It was Colette. And she said, I'm going to very nervous. You're very thin, because you've been, you know, in Holland and the latter time of the war, and she'd starve. Anyway, it's the only new car they ever had. A Sunbeam Torb at 90, and I said, I'll drive you. We arrived at Claridge's, and a big Rolls Royce pulled up behind, and a very famous American producer who was going to produce the play she was in, uh, she was going to meet him. This Rose pulled up behind, and he honked the hooter, and, I, and she said, oh, I said, no, 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 don't. Make a proper entrance. He could wait. I opened the door for Audrey. I said, off you go, darling, good luck, and off she went. And the chap in the Rolls Royce behind was Gilbert Miller. He may have done her some good, but he didn't do me any good. But so ever. And we used to get co correspond at Christmas time for several years. She was a lovely girl. But it was an amazing time, those early days in, in television. Mm. During, during the war, you were actually in the RAF, wasn't you? Yeah. yeah. What, what did you actually do? I was supposed to the film unit. Oh, well, you was in the film unit, was you really? And where was that based? Was that over there? Well, I started my air crew training. And then Dickie Attenborough and I got posted down to the film unit to make a film called, written by Terence Rattigan, called Journey Together. Mm -hmm. It was rather a good picture, actually, we had good training. It was known as Journey Forever, because this would be 1943, and the schedule was three months. Everybody else got promotion. If you were a boom swinger or a camera puller, you became some. They didn't have an establishment for actors. <laughs> we had our white flashes, but anyway. No one was in a hurry to finish this picture because we knew we were going to be posted to East Africa when it was over, so it dragged on and on and on. <laughs> but it was a very, very good picture. But Dickie and I then left. Uh, what happened to Dickie? I'd lost to I spoke to him not long ago. I was, uh, I was posted to the ration card section. <laughs> the you ration card section? Why. Yes, because I don't know, they sort of lost us. <laughs> no, so I'm not proud of my war effort, but you did as you were told. And, um, yeah. Subsequently discharged mm. with an anxiety neurosis, but I went them. And then, when you after the war, obviously you went back into acting again, obviously. Well, I didn't, didn't do anything else, um, and uh, it was curious because I'd had a success with a play called Flare Park before I joined up, which was a huge success. And then, like many other chaps, when after the war, when he came out, it was difficult getting started again. About six months, couldn't get a nibble. And then I went into the Winslow Boy, playing the older brother. Pity in a way, because I was then playing an 18-year-old. I had three and a half years in the Air Force, and prior to that, mm. I'd been in the theatre. I'd had done season with Don Wolfit and Stratford and Avon, all those sort of things. So I was now playing a character part, if you follow me. Mm -hmm. And it took me about 40 years to get that out of the system before anybody realised that I was grown up. It always happens if you make a hit mm. in a particular part, you're stuck with it for a very long time. Type, it suffers in the cost. same way. Mm. A bit typecast if you're not careful. Oh, I don't mind being typecast. <laughs> well, no, I haven't retired, but they've stopped asking me for a time, and that's, I'm quite happy about that. That film, The Flare Path, the part you played no, in it wasn't a film, it was a play. The play, sorry, the play, sorry, the, play path, sorry. The, the part you played in that. Um, does that actually encourage you to join the RAF? Because that was an RAF place. No, I'd already volunteered. Uh, oh. And in those days, you, you had a... If you volunteered for the air crew, there was a slight wait while they, they called you up and they wanted to. Uh, and I went into Flare Path and um, I was called up from, from there. Oh, you actually called up? Then. Well, they just said I'd already joined, but they say we'd like you tomorrow, sort of thing, you know. Mm. Well, unfortunately, really, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know, that was it, happened to everybody. Yeah. So do you remember what took place after you, after you left the wind? Uh, wind after the wind? After, mm. Well, the great thing in those days, I was able to work on films at the same time as doing a show. Stu the whole business has changed. You then had a film industry, mm. and each studio made its own films. And you, I made the film of the Winslow Boy, Easy Money, Quartet, various pictures, while I was in the Winslow Boy. In those days, a run of the play contract meant just that. And I was stuck with it just over two and a quarter years. Which I didn't want to stay with it. 
Nowadays, a random pay contract is only nine months. Isn't it? Yes, yes. Just nine months. Yeah. yeah. So there's been some great improvements in the periphery. Yeah. And then of course, Debs would have been coming on the scene about now as well, just about that time. Um, yeah. I think I was on the scene, wasn't I? There, then? You did first of all. It was a great nightmare when you were. Yes, they wanted you. Somebody rang me and doing the Invisible Man I TV was ten. series. Nine. Were you? Nine, ten? Nine, yes, I think so. Mother was a nine. 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 And this nine. was a of a problem. Somebody rang up, and I forgot his name, the art director said, look, that little girl. Ralph girl. Smart. Ralph Smart. Mm. Could we use Devon? And we had all this heart searching, is this a wise thing to do? We went to a school mistress, and in the end it came down to LST. I said, should I deny there'd be a chance at that time to earn some money, which I'll never be able to give it. And they laid on uh, a tutor and that sort of thing, and it was sort of a couple of days a week, wasn't it? Something like that. It was about that, yes. So that's where she... I think that's done it for over it, well, about a year, wasn't it? On and off. <coughs> on and off. And yeah, that was strange. Uh, yes, yeah, it's strange for you because you're acting with an invisible man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 we had two invisible men, actually. The first one, because, you know, when he's not there, he's invisible. It was done by strings and things in those days, isn't it? Wires. Very good, that. This, it was, actually. But this bloke, he did about what, four episodes. And then all of a sudden, he demanded a stand-in. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I thought, that's silly. He's never there anyway. It's <laughs> <laughs> very peculiar. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was a bit of a tyke, actually, because I... How many chaperones did I get through a month? About three, wasn't it? Oh, even more. Even more? Even more than that, yes. You weren't no, no, a good girl. No, great girls. <laughs> girls. Has she changed much? Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Serene and that. wonderful, Larry. Oh, please. Have <laughs> you the day? I've heard some things. Some thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I did live TV after that. It was Life of Bliss with George Cole. Remember that? Mm. Very well. Life of Bliss, George Cole. I mean, as a... Kids, you don't have any nerves, do you, at all? No. I couldn't understand how, when we're coming up to actually doing it in front of the studio audience and the cameras there, <coughs> people were going like that. They were, I thought, well, why are they doing it if they don't enjoy it? Because they were having breakdowns all over the place. At one point, one of the ladies in it she said, I can't go on, I can't do it. And you were live in those days. I thought it was great fun, but... Mm -hmm. The innocence of youth. Innocence, I think, yes. total. Of course, we work together, don't we, Dad? What do we do together? Oh, please. Does he want fun? Yes, thank you. Father? What do we do together? We did uh, Who together, as you know. Oh, of course we did, yes. Yeah, <laughs> 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 yes. Who well, did, that's you, right. who did you, you play, Dad? Who did you play? Travers. Ah. And I love Travers. Yes. yes. But it was funny because you said to me, Come on, Dad, you can. Uh, they want, I know I, they'll, they'll have you. I remember you saying this. I said, I, I've got the storyline. I said, I've got to say a great line. part for you, see. It's I thought you were going to ask you, did, did you, because you were actually on the. Yeah, I yeah, said, she was on the head in the thing. And I spoke to the producer, and they said, Now, look, Jack, that was a bit, I suppose, looked down on Doctor Who in those days. It was a kids' program. Silly ass. <laughs> and uh, they said, no, Don't worry, you put whiskers on. You're nobody, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I put the whiskers on. Yeah, but you were you were such a success. They were in for another storyline. They right? asked me to stay for a year, and I turned it down. Yeah. Can you imagine? Why yeah. did you turn it down? Well, it's fright much too grand. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh, I thought, well, this isn't proper. <laughs> ah, see what you missed. Wrong. Wrong. Well, you could have stayed another year, and you turned it down. Yeah, but I couldn't do anything else with her, could I? Really. Anyway, that's just by the way, just a family. Sorry, <laughs> but we enjoyed very much working together. I think we did, didn't we, Deb? On who we had a lot of laughs. We did, yes. Yeah. Great Very fun. Nice. Was that the first time you worked with Pat Trout? Um, no, I'll tell you what. I worked with Pat Trout in Invisible Man, but he wasn't in the scenes that I was in because somebody sent me an That's episode, right. And I was watching it, and then all of a sudden Pat came on, and I thought, I don't remember this. And of course, I wasn't in his scenes. But we did Invisible Man together. But did you work with Pat? Yeah, probably because Pat, prior to uh, the Invisible Man, uh, to um, 
What am I talking about? Doctor Who. Okay. <laughs> right. You know, he was always playing bits in pictures and things. He'd always turn up as a policeman or whatever, and then he had his break on that. Lovely man. Did you ever work with um, William Hartnell? Because he was the same yes. sort of time as well. Did you ever work with him? Yes. But I can't think what he had. Oh, The Way Ahead. Oh. Remember a film, Carl Reed film, The Way Ahead? Mm. He was a marvellous, marvellous actor, Bill. Wasn't he slightly strange? Yes, I'm just thinking he was odd. <laughs> 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 and he, last time I saw Bill, he was doing a play that. Who's the chap who. Roy Plumley, does the Island Discs. They'd written a play called Half Seas Over. And Bill Hartman was in that, and he died while he was doing it, which was tragic. Mm. Mm. How long ago did he die then? Oh, years and years ago. Years ago. I remember him in Boots in Snudge. No, mm. I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. I'm right, Boots aren't I? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was a sort of spinning off thing. Oh, we did right. the army, an army yeah. game. The army game. Army game. Yeah. 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 And they That's were in that, I think, and then they sprouted. Yes. I did a show with Colin Baker in London called Corpse. Corpse was a play, wasn't it? Yeah. It was like a two-hander, wasn't it? It was a two-hander. Well, it was great fun, except it was highly dangerous because we had a, a fight at the end, a sword fight. It was a very weird play. And I had to wear a plate behind my shirt, you know, and he put this thing into me. And Colin was a bit wild. <laughs> he hasn't changed much, then. But not as, wild as the, not as wild as the author, who insisted on playing. And this demented chap, we're on a raised bit of the stage, and Colin was ill for a couple of performances, and I forgot his name about it. I couldn't remember. No, I can't remember his name. And he charged out this door, knocked the balustrade open, fell straight on the deck underneath, and knocked himself out. So he pulled the curtain down. <laughs> then Colin came back. That was at the Strand Theatre. And we enjoyed very much working together. He's a great chap. Colin was doing a sponsored spin, was he? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's right. It was. That's right. There it goes. Yeah. Quite thin. How is he now? I haven't seen him for some time. Yeah. Before you appeared in Doctor Who, in um, the TV series called The Power Game, wasn't it? Mm. Pre pre previous to that was the yeah. Playmakers grew into the Power yeah. Game. Yeah. The Power Game. Yeah. We worked together on that. Uh, you've had an episode in that, mm. yes, that's indeed. Right. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that was a marvellous series. Mm. The Playmakers was light years ahead of its time. And the script editor, what's his name, Wilf Greatrix, marvellous chap. And the Playmakers was all about the t times of vertical takeoff aircraft. And we had one episode, is we had to get it balanced right. You'd have, I've forgotten the exact number, but you had to be an equal number balanced slightly towards the left and the other one lot vaguely to the right. If you follow me politically, I'm talking. And uh, we're doing this vertical takeoff episode, and suddenly the air ministry turned up and said we had to cancel it for some technical reason. I didn't, he'd found out that it was going to be chopped, but we were ahead of them. And so we had, but that left us with a biased series, if you follow me, which was quite hairy. I can't remember whether it was the right wing or left wing had the bias, but they did. And we'd have all sorts of strange boffins turn up at the studio. It was a marvellous series. Then yeah, it came like they're probably nicking all your ideas, I expect. That's what? Probably, they're probably nicking all your ideas. <laughs> <laughs> probably yes, yes, yes. Probably yes. Like that, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, that was a great series, actually. Went on for three years. Three years? Mm-hmm. Mm. And then, of course, Doctor Who, which we're sort of here today for. Yes, yes uh, that was fun. Yeah, the abominable snowman was the first story. Do you remember much about that, actually? I'll tell you what I do remember. Yes, exactly. I've like, probably heard it before, but that lovely when we were shooting in, in uh, Snowdonia. Snowdonia. Mm. And there was a low angle shot, and I forgot, Jerry Blake was directing it. That's right. And we had the Yeti on the horizon, looking from our eye line. Yeti, and suddenly, one of these Yeti fell off. <laughs> <laughs> and we said, My God, he went, be dying. Big dying, <laughs> hundreds of feet down. God, he's killed himself. <laughs> and we all rushed down. It was very hairy. What the yeti? Mate? The yeti. <laughs> <laughs> well done. And we found, and we found this yeti. And when we opened him up, 
He was absolutely stoned out of his mind. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer, the moral to that story is, if you're going to get drunk, you want to fall off a mountain, wear a Yeti costume, <laughs> because it's all foam rubber. <laughs> we couldn't believe it. <laughs> well, it's really great. But you, Fraser and Pat, I used to lose you. Why? Well, because oh, you yes. were so cold yeah. that it was freezing. I used to say, well, where's they come now? I used to find them behind one of the vans, having nips of brandy and all that. Scott, don't you? Was it Scott? <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Brake, remember darling Jerry Brake, the director, a little lovely man. It was his first direction job, I think. Was it? And uh, it was coming down in buckets. It was absolutely miserable. And I went out, I said, Jerry, I'd like a word. You know, he obviously thought a bloody actor wants to ask something. <laughs> I said, no, Jerry, it's very important. So he came out, he said, what do you want? I said, no, you want this, and gave him the whiskey. And he was very grateful yes, about it. Was. <laughs> yes, yeah, she was. Yes. Yeah, but they were interesting. It was fun shooting that up there. Do you it? remember the first time we had, the first shot we did together? When I, Fraser and I, we found the Yeti's cave. We're running to find the doctor, and you had to pop up behind a boulder. You couldn't get in the can, could you? Just from the finger, they laughed. Yeah, silly hat on a gun and everything else. And I took one look at Dad, and I looked at Fraser, and he looks at me, and I looked at Dad, and we collapsed. I think we did that take what? Oh, don't go into it. Ten or eleven. The board really director popular. was going mad. I said, but, but, but look at him. Look at that idiot you said. Yeah. No, they were good days. They were happy days. And then, of course, you re revised the role in the, the Web of Fear, of course. Oh, did I? You did. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we hope you did. Yes, 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 yes. 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 They've all been wiped, haven't they? Yeah, most of them. Yes. Are you still on? Odd episode. Odd episode. Odd episode. Odd episode. Yeah. Yes. So we've been actual complete story, <coughs> unfortunately, been lost. Mm. There are mm. audios you can get, and there are some audios. But mm. mm. well, you created it again in downtime, didn't you? Yes, that was fun doing downtime, wasn't it? Was it was alright. You heard about Dad, that, did you? you know, I've got downtime. Got that. Uh, I said to Dad, nearly you know, all right. are you going to you know, recreate your original part in Who? And um, he says, oh, yeah, yeah, that'll be all right. I said, well, you'll be all right this time, Dad. You won't need the makeup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> how unkind. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. No, it's good fun, though, isn't it? It was, it was good fun. Shot in Desix University, that's and right. it was snowing. Then it rained, it snowed. Then it rained, did everything. The bright sunshine, the oh, well, everything. I thought you filmed the weather sky. We did. You really were, actually. Yes, it wasn't bad. We were put up on campus, weren't we? Yes. Very strange. Yes, it was a weird job. Yeah. That's what's quite a good production. We've got obviously been sort of low budget. They were quite. Modern times. Production was very, very good, actually. Yes, I thought so. I didn't know if it sold that way, though, did it? I don't honestly know. I don't know. No, I don't know. It's still alive. Someone got downtime. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it did, you know. But of course, you didn't have a doctor who in it, did you? No, you couldn't, could you? No, you couldn't. That was me. Right? No, you wouldn't have it. Yeah. So we shot downtown without a doctor who, which is. List laid in the was And I, yeah, yeah, and I remember at the end when my character had to disappear. Die. Die. Yeah. That was a nightmare. Because they, they said, lie down, and it would. <laughs> Cold on the concrete, <laughs> and they covered you in fiberglass or I know, squirted or horrible. <laughs> they never got it. It took hours, and I was frozen. I thought, I don't like the sound of this because it's the last shot in the picture, and that's the thing I know about. Never in the last shot, if it's dodgy, it doesn't matter, they kill you. They've got the rest of it in the camera. <laughs> Was asking if I've got any questions at this stage to see if there's anything. Mm. Yes, yeah, please, isn't it? You like you don't have Soaring to in their mind. Yeah. Yeah, I've got any questions. There's always a silence at this point. There's always a silence. Yeah. Always. Yeah. always. Yeah. People have to think, don't they? Oh, I don't know. Debbie, can I ask a question? Um, you probably know that Big Finish are bringing out a range of audio adventures, new audio adventures with, with doctors is and that, companions. Is that bags or is it? No. No, no. no. It should be via BBC then. Licensed by BBC. Who who's running it then? Gary Russell. Gary Russell. And, uh, oh, it's Jason Gary. Elliot, yeah. Yeah. It's Jason Hill. Yeah. Ah, what if that? It's a <laughs> if you were approached to do a second story, a second Doctor story, but obviously they have to recast the part. 
Would you be prepared to do it, or would it not be the same without Pam? Oh, no, I'd do it like a child. Absolutely. But somebody's got on to him about uh, CDs for who, and it's it's not Gary. It's Bill, not Bill Bags. Bags doing his bag. Bill Bags it's not Bags, it's somebody else. Hmm. M McGrath? That's what you said, you only... Yeah. And he phoned me up three weeks ago. He was doing his CDs of who. Has anyone heard of it? No, no, no. It's not, not one from the... It's not the... Um, well, I'm going to phone when I get back, but... Uh, it's not the web of theory audio thing, is it? No, but that would no. be the BBC worldwide, wouldn't it? So that would yeah. be. So you say oh, this is licensed through the BBC? Yeah, they've got a license through the BBC. Oh. Well, I'll give them a link. <laughs> Actually, you did ask me to do something. Because I have put that. Usually is in one of the other ranges, uh, like for, for Bernie's summer film, where she wasn't playing her role as a companion, but she was in it as a, just another uh, playing a different character. So, oh, really? so you could always get in it practice as a... In that way? Yeah, yeah that way. Yeah. 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 Right. Anybody else? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to ask one that's just sort of about it, as my friend pointed out. Is there anybody that you can think of who could take over from Pat during the audio adventures if they decide to do a second Doctor? That's impossible. I could. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it has been suggested that perhaps David Troughton could take it over. David, yes, uh, yes he could. Uh, he looks very much like his father. Yes, he's mad, huh? He would just be his voice. voice. Good actor, yeah. 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 Would you consider that being acceptable? Oh, absolutely. I it think would. Mm. Good idea. Very good. Like his dad. Yeah, he is. You know, he's very smashing, good. isn't he? And the other son is Michael, isn't he? That's right. That's right. I think David's more more Pat. Oh, more Pat, much yes. Definitely. More Pat. Last time I saw Michael and David, they were in short trousers. Small, <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? When I was doing here, there was kids. Kids. <laughs> well, I, know, but I didn't know where the times come. You, you, you haven't changed. You're just the same. Thanks, <laughs> 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 Yes, I was. Yeah. And I like an idiot. I can't remember why I said that. I don't know. I've been doing something else, right? I've been doing something else. I know. I think I probably was, to be honest. You were doing something else. Yeah, I had a decision to make. Either I did whatever I did, hmm. or that. And I wish I had been able to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what I could have done Because I enjoyed very much working on it. Well, you and Fraser got on so well, didn't you? Yes. Fraser. Yes. And what was that thing, that episode with the ball that was supposed to follow us around? The sphere. The sphere. That was out of the yes, Yes's chest, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. yes. And that bloody sphere never went the way they wanted it to go. <laughs> <laughs> came down off the table, supposed to chase us, and he went over there, you know. And then, I remember that, but we'd never get it in the can. Yeah. <laughs> and they were very fun. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody else any questions? No, doesn't look like it. <laughs> <laughs> Albert Hitchcock or somewhere else. Which was the best director? Because you worked for both, obviously. I don't know. Which Difficult one to answer. I'll tell you, Hitchcock just celebrated his 100th, what's the name? And I went to Gainsborough Studios, which was a studio I got away. I never worked there before, at least anything. And there was only one other, a lot of cameramen, directors of people who I knew, a lot of time now. And there was only one actor. That was Foster, Barry Foster. And Barry, and I said, it's funny. Why are we only, we're the only two actors? Then we sadly realised we were the only two extant ones who were still alive who worked with Hitch. Yeah. However, we were getting into interview for Channel 4, and I remember it quite vividly. Someone asked me, can you remember working with Hitch? What do you remember particularly? I said, I remember very well the first day. On It wasn't a really good film, I didn't think, under Capricorn, but it had Bergman and... Wilding, Joe Cotton, Cecil Parker, Sally, and a lot. Nine of us. As you normally do, you sat round the table and read the script. And then usually, there's a pause and the director will tell you what he has in mind. And we read the script and there was a pause and it said back and all he said was, 
I'm paying you all far too much, you better just get on with it. <laughs> that was it, that was it. Orson was an amazing, I went to two pictures with thought three. Uh, uh, oh, he was, uh, to my mind, he was a genius. I could quite understand why Hollywood couldn't own him. We worked with him on, who was it, a Wilcox picture, Trouble in the Glen. And then I did this thing with Strachard in, shot in Madrid. Quite understood why Orson was in Madrid, because he'd suddenly say, no, this isn't right, no, jeez, no, break everybody, and he'd break. And then he'd get an idea, and I remember this vividly. He broke one day, and we went back, no, he said, come back to the hotel, son, and I went back. That lovely wife of his, Paula Marin, was there. And he dozed off in the armchair, and we sat there, and suddenly, about three o'clock in the morning, he said, got it. And he called all the boys back, and they all willingly did it. Couldn't make that happen with the unions, in, but he was very, very good with them. Um, but I remember an awful shot. I had to drive on Madrid Airport. It was a mile-long drive, straight road. I'll tell you when it was, because it was the XK120 just come out of the Jagger. They borrowed this car. Also wanted to get a shot of the car and him and apparently in the aeroplane circling around in the same frame. So he had the camera on the deck. And they said, now you drive this mile, you've got chaps with white flags saying go fast or slow. You end on marks and play the little scene, which I had to do, get out and say, darling, I love you. Or something like that. So we rehearsed this bloody thing and they said, faster and faster. This, you've got to remember this is years ago. And I was doing a ton in this XK20. I thought, Christ, they were going stop nearly on marks and got out and said duh, 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 duh. <laughs> <laughs> and they couldn't get that shot they couldn't get that shot in the can another thing he did and that's in the film which is quite a good picture actually um, there was a an, a control tower it was the modern one it was the control tower which was built during the Spanish Civil War with a rusty old iron thing going up the steps with a sign at the bottom in Spanish, and I said, what's that? They said, Dan it says, danger, keep out. You see, anyway, awesome. Typical of him. And, the, and there's a little parapet right at the top with one rail. And you know about me and Heights there. He said, now look, Jack, I think the idea would be, if you sat with your feet over the thing, hold the rail. I thought, oh, right. <laughs> and give this speech. And he had the cameraman, lovely man, TT. He was hanging out beside him. We were both shaking. And he had great trouble in keeping the cameras to because he had the Aeroflex 16mm to shoot it. Those are the sort of things. And also, with Orson, the agent in London said Orson's a dodgy character, money wise. And uh, he said, and you couldn't get a guarantee from him. I had a guarantee of whatever it meant, not there wasn't a very big part. But uh, he said, you can be paid in. Rubles or yen, but I don't think he's got any sterling. <laughs> anyway, I did the thing and I went over and it was fine. I had three wonderful days. Can you imagine it then? Three days. And because it was in penalty, it was £75 a day, which is a hell of a lot of money. And the only one I wired my agent in London, and he, did then, he came back and said, All you've got, you're on your own. All you've got is your hotel bill. And I never managed it, so I had to try and spend £75 a day on my hotel bill. So I said, well, <laughs> you have a brand new, we'll have Napoleon, and I managed to get a suit made, and I never managed to spend £75. <laughs> the best three days of my life. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was a fine director. Hitch was different. Hitch was, he got everything, work, everything was worked out. I told you that flip remark about our painting, but he took great... You had interviews and God knows what endlessly till he knew who he had and what talent they had to bring to the picture. Um, but it was a mechanic different. I mean, uh, Orson was a five inch brush director, yeah. great flair. He was brilliant in his own way, but it was all worked out in his book. He knew exactly the shots he was doing before he got on there. Obviously, in the day when obviously you were doing plays and whatever, it was not not rep, rep theatre, as you know. Um, Anthony Ainey was here a couple of weeks ago, mm. Summer of Men, and he was saying it's a bit of a shame the way that they've sort of died, mm. which they haven't had, because obviously the cost of laying things on. And he was also saying how strange it is now that, um, like you're saying yourself there, TV 
was like a bit of a taboo type thing. You know, mm, mm. Nowadays, of course, it's the opposite. Absolutely. You become a soap star. That's right. Absolutely. And you have the money. What do you think? What do you feel about that? Well, it's so different. I don't know. Um, they used to be employed, wouldn't they? I mean, it's full time employment. Yes, but it's not spread about, Deb, it's not spread about, it's the no, it's not, incidence no. of unemployment amongst the profession now is higher than it's ever been. That's true. Mm. You read about people in the soaps, but they don't, it doesn't take up many. No. Um, but are there many more people in the profession now these days? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Well, you have chairs of drama, don't you? It didn't exist in my day. Mm. No, yeah, we have a little raftery company at Frinton, we do a weekly rep, seven weeks in the summer every year. We just had the 25th anniversary of that. And um, it's, not, it's important for people, not too long, but if people could do a short burst of that, you can't teach. You can teach a lot of things. I found talent that's coming through young talent very good nowadays. But they all say the same thing. You can only learn your craft mm. in front of an audience. Yeah, really. really. yeah, you right. have to do it. And, uh, do it quickly. It's rather like doing a square bash and enjoying the services. You do a few weeks of that and then you've got confidence. Of all the roles you've played, what, what do you think is your favourite role? you remember the best? Well, that depends largely on, I think, whether it's a play or film or who, and who you did it with. I would say, unquestionably, probably Fair Path. Hmm. I knew you were going to say that. It's only I have to, because it was a yeah. part. That's a wonderful yeah. part. I actually did Fair Path once. Uh, Oh yes, and I Seven saw, years, yeah, that I've got to send it to you, um, Nick Henson. with Nicky Henson. With Nicky Henson, yeah. He was with us at the, um, at the Judy Dench thing on Sunday. Oh, was he? Yes, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm the chance oh, we that's all right. sent it right. out. <laughs> <laughs> He's still a hooligan. Is it all you still? Yes. <laughs> he gave you tonsillitis. Well, Many years ago. No! <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful motorbike, a big motorbike, yeah. Yeah. and he asked me to go for a ride with him on the back of the road. Can we take him for a ride then? Yeah. 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 The reason I got tonsillitis is because the wind, as you know, Mother, I've got nothing between the ears, yeah. and uh, the wind got in my ear, and next time I was having tonsillitis, so there. Yes. <laughs> yes. Any more questions anyone's got before we wrap up for today? Well, it's been joy nice being here. Excellent meal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, and, uh, lovely. It really has been super. Mm. Lovely day all together. Yeah. And my mother's enjoyed it, yes? Oh, yes. yes. Good on my face, a Cheshire cat. <laughs> <laughs> Good. And for now, ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you Jack and Deb Swatley. Funny because I didn't want to mention it. Anthony only said, Awesome, was it? The man eats too much ice cream. Yeah, you what? He eats too much ice cream.